Last week, I had the incredible opportunity of participating in submarine escape training in Rimouski, Quebec. The experience was unlike anything I've ever done. Hey, I'm Siddharth, and this is how Submariner trainees prepare for the worst case scenario. Of all the terrible things that could happen on a submarine, from uncontrollable fires to imploding to an instant death, probably the worst case scenario is being stuck at the bottom of the ocean without a way of getting out. It's for this reason that submariners in training, in most nations, undergo what's known as escape training. In Canada, this training is held in a dedicated simulator located in Rimouski, Quebec. I'm currently in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and so getting there was about an eight hour bus ride. The Canadian Submarine Escape Trainer is a part of the Maritime Institute of Quebec, and Canadian sailors began training at this facility back in 2003. Before that, in the 1950s, sailors were sent over to the UK to HMS Dolphin to train in their 100 foot escape tower. The whole reason we're out here is to not only learn about the escape equipment, but also gain practical knowledge with the tower escape and surface drills for once we get to the surface. Okay, so I might be getting a little ahead of myself here because I haven't actually covered how escape works. Let's talk about that before we actually see it in practice. So this right here is a Victoria class submarine and on the forward and after end of the boat are escape compartments. Within each escape compartment is an escape tower. And the best way I could describe an escape tower is it's basically an airlock that you climb into. And the point of having an escape tower is so that in an escape situation, the crew can climb the tower one person at a time, flood the tower to equalize with sea pressure, and then open the upper lid to eject yourself to the surface. Once one person has gone through the cycle, the tower can then be drained down and the next person can step in to repeat the procedure. Now, of course, you're not going to get into this thing with whatever you're wearing, but you'll first don a survival suit. The suit is there to one, protect you from hypothermia, and two, provide you with enough positive buoyancy to take you from whatever depth you're currently at to the surface. There are many versions of the suit, the most recent of which is, I believe, the Mark 11, but here's how they function. So firstly, separate from the suit, we have an inner thermal layer, and the purpose of this is to protect the SKP from hypothermia because once you've reached the surface, it may be a while before any rescue arrives. And then you have the actual suit. The interesting things that I'd like to point out here are firstly, this piece of tubing here that goes across the left arm. This is known as the stole, and this is used to inflate a portion of the suit to allow you to float, giving you positive buoyancy. You can inflate the suit by either blowing air into it or there's a valve on the escape tower into which you can plug in the stole. The suit has these relief valves on the chest which you can open to let the pressure out. And the other thing I'd like to point out is that there's only one size. So it doesn't matter if you're 4'11 or you're 6'4, you're wearing the same suit. Now the whole goal of this two-day training was to provide Submariner trainees with the knowledge to use the escape tower, but also the survival know-how for once we actually reach the surface. We began the training by first learning how to consciously exhale as we come up to the surface. And the reason this is important is because when you're in a sunken submarine and the upper lid of that escape tower opens, the positive buoyancy in your suit will cause you to shoot up to the surface at a ridiculous speed of something like 30 knots. And so as you move up the water column, the air in your lungs is rapidly expanding as the pressure around you is decreasing. And so if you don't remember to exhale, that increase in pressure can cause you to damage or burst your lungs. After this, we went over surface drills, which are the list of things that you do immediately after you get to the surface. And this consists of unzipping your ascent hood, which is what holds the pocket of air, then flipping your tabs, the relief valves in your chest to the open position, and lastly, blowing air into your stole to keep you positively buoyant and floating at the surface. And then we had the chance to actually get inside the submarine escape trainer. This trainer was pretty dang impressive. It's pretty much a replica of the escape tower found within the Victoria class submarines. And you can see here, it's held in place by these cables and it's lowered with the use of a hydraulic motor found at the bottom of the pool. Now, before COVID, the trainees would practice pressurized submarine escape training. And this is where the escape tower is placed 10 meters below the surface of the water. But because of the dangers with that, the training was modified and now the escape tower is pretty much kept at the surface. 
The drill performed within the submarine is pretty straightforward. Uh, the first and most important thing to do is to place the upper lid operating gear in the idle position. And what this means is that the upper lid will automatically open when the sea pressure has equalized with the pressure within the tower. If, let's say, an SKP has forgotten to do this and instead has left the operating gear in the shut position, then they could drown themselves in the escape tower. The next thing to do is to make sure that the drain valve for the tower is shut so that you just don't have seawater flooding into the compartment. Then the flood valve should also be shut. And finally, the vent valve should be open to allow for air in the tower to escape. After that, you climb into the escape tower. And once you're in the escape tower, you then flip the tabs on your suit to the closed position. So these are the relief valves. You then zip down the ascent hood, inflate your stole to give you positive buoyancy, and flood the tower. Flooding of the tower happens pretty rapidly, and so you're quickly ejected to the surface. And that concluded day one. For day two, something upsetting happened, which is that I unfortunately lost the footage that I recorded with my GoPro. And so I don't have any B-roll to show you, but nonetheless, I'll still quickly talk through what we did for day two. So day two began with us being familiarized with the SC-1000, which is another type of survival suit. This is used in the event that we escape at the surface, and this suit felt a lot more warmer and buoyant. So we first got comfortable with the suit being in the water. Then we practiced a scenario where we had a casualty and had to bring that casualty to a 12-person survival tent. Finally, we finished day two back in the escape tower, practicing what's known as the last man drill. And in an escape situation, there's always someone designated as the senior survivor. And the senior survivor is not necessarily the highest ranked individual, but just the person with the most experience. And as a senior survivor, they're responsible for coordinating the escape and they also decide when to escape because in some situations, it might make more sense to just stay put and wait for rescue. So the senior survivor is also the last person to leave the submarine. And as the last person to leave, they have to be the one to seal themselves in the escape tower. And they do this by lifting the lower lid of the escape tower with a strap. The lid itself is heavier than it looks and it also only seals in a certain orientation, which takes a bit of practice. We then had the chance to use the individual life rafts, which is what you would have attached to your left thigh of your survival suit. And that concluded the training at the Canadian Submarine Escape Trainer. This is definitely one of those skills that you learn and you hope you never have to use. But as we kept being reminded, the key determinants for survival are knowledge and determination. Good old KD. Thank you for watching this video. On this channel, I enjoy making films in the realm of engineering, especially when it comes to undersea technology. And so if that's something that interests you, subscribe to be notified when I post next. With that being said, I'll see you soon.